Welcome to five technologies in the classroom. The intent here is to enhance and extend your teaching, not to replace the teacher. So this is an introduction that will bring these five technologies into your ESOL classroom, English for speakers of other languages. And with some adjustment, all of these devices can be used in any classroom. We're going to give some theory. We're going to then talk about um, the importance of portfolios. Give about eight minutes overview of the five different technologies covering newspapers, digital cameras, Skype, CDs like photo tours, the iPod, and websites. We're going to discuss how to get these technologies and then how to use each individual technology. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at how newspapers can be brought into the classroom. I know many of us have had newspapers in the classroom. I've certainly taught for 10 years with newspapers, but I always felt that I wasn't using the newspaper in the best way. I often tossed out the newspaper after a week. Well, it turns out, if you have highlighted something useful, that can help in class after class. Newspapers can, in fact, be delivered in this sort of format. You just be sitting either somewhere at home, and then you bring in packets like this, one for each student. And then they can also be used in um, the student's portfolio. The idea is that all of these technologies build to a student's ending, leaving the class with either a portfolio on a CD of some sort, or by having the student carry away uh, a folder with papers glued inside. So that's newspapers. We want to remember that newspapers are important. The second technology that we're discussing here is the digital camera. Um, I prefer cameras that have um, the, the chips that pull out because then they can be quickly downloaded. And um, they also I like the kind that have batteries that you can have extra batteries ready to go. So that's one possible use. I mean, you're making, for people who are not familiar with these cameras, there's the movie version, and then there's the taking a picture, you know, still pictures and movies. The next thing is Skype. And I've got Skype loaded on this computer. It pops up when you hit Open Skype. That's what Skype looks like. It's a bunch of contacts and... Um, We'll get into how it's actually used, but that famous green button is a way that you can connect this laptop, and this laptop can be in your classroom, it can be sitting um, at your home so you can engage students and communicate with students after class, listening to um, video messages, and um, this is also a learning tool for students because you can, in the classroom, up here where it says add contact, um, you can get them to add themselves. This is the third technology that's going to be very important, not only in ESOL, but in virtually every classroom. Within 10 years, um, every classroom will have something like Skype so that classroom to classroom can be contacted and it can be used as a way of peer-to-peer -peer teaching and learning. The CDs, such as a photo tour, I have here the downtowner. I shot these, then I took these uh, photos and movies, put them on this CD, then I made, uh, let's say, five copies to give to 10 students. If I have 25 students, 
I make sure there are 13 or maybe 12 copies, one per two students. On here are videos and photos, also links to websites. The iPod, well, I'm going to represent the iPod by doing something called sci-fi. This right here is a list of 46 hours around, um, let's see, March to June 2006. I was able to download podcasts, and these are um, very restricted um, audio files. They're, normally, this would be 74 or 80 minutes on a CD audio. Well, they have this technology to restrict the number of um, the, the size of each of these audio files. So instead of having like an hour and 15 minutes on here, I now have 46 hours of audio. And uh, these can be listened to either here as podcasts or on those little machines called iPods. Then websites. In general, I'm going to show you things like um, the great YouTube. You don't actually need to know how to use YouTube. Your students can show you. Most students have either heard of YouTube or they have seen a video that is placed on YouTube. And, well, it's fairly straightforward. It's YouTube.com. You can make a video then upload it to YouTube, to your account there, and then view. Any of the students can go and view this, or you can send that link to each of the students. Okay. That was the basic, what are the 